Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to learn a skill fast and efficiently. Let's do this. Alright everyone, welcome back to another video. And today I want to talk about learning skills, but not only learning a skill per se, but learning a skill effectively, fast, and efficiently. Because time is very limited in our lives and we want to make sure we make the most out of the time we have. And that's why I've created four steps that will help you analyze what skill you're getting to, whether it's more in physical, more in mental, or whatnot. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, the very first aspect of learning a skill is the planning. Planning is basically like writing down the map. When you're going on a journey, you wanna make sure you know the paths you're gonna take and you wanna know where you're gonna get. Because what's the point of going on a journey and not knowing where you're going in the first place? It doesn't really make sense. You wanna have the end in mind written already. You don't wanna just go on a journey without having a specific place. You could do that, but you're gonna find that it's kind of a waste of time. So have expectations. When you write down these expectations, make sure they are as realistic as possible. Don't think that you're going to become a famous rock star or a really great artist within a year because let's be honest, that's not exactly realistic. Write down your limitations, whether that be physical, mental, in terms of resource, write it down. Know the scope of where you can work and how you can work with those resources. And I really encourage you to write down these objectives slash goals into four categories. The first one is the daily, second is weekly, the third is the monthly, and the last is the yearly. For a daily routine that's going to be very realistic for me is at least five minutes practicing scales on perhaps the piano or guitar. That's that's pretty that's pretty practical, right? And when we go to weekly goals now, this is where it gets more challenging. So a good example of having a weekly goal is learning a song, whether that be on the piano or the guitar. Perhaps I'm going to spend 20 minutes to an hour every single day so that in a week, I can already play a song. And by a month's time, I should be able to play a set list, a whole set of songs that I've never learned before. And in a year, I should have improved overall as a musician. It's up to you, but this is how I would do it. Kaya, you have to have a plan for where you're headed, and that's gonna help you get better at the skill. Kasi syempre naman, sayang ng oras mo kung wala kong balak sa buhay mo, di ba? And lastly, this is really important, get advice. Get someone who has a lot of experience in that field. Let them give you advice or tips on how they got there so that you can learn from their mistakes because learning from mistakes really propels you forward to get better in a skill. Learning is two-way. You can always learn from someone and someone can always learn from you. So make sure to always be open with people when it comes to learning because you can always learn something from someone. Now the second part is called theory. Theory involves basically everything that you could possibly do for sport, for music, or for art. All these different studies about the theory of things. Theoretically, I could do this. Theoretically, this could happen. It's just trying to do the thing, but on paper rather than in practicality. And that's why not all theory is useful. But again, it's a very important thing to get into. Now, when you, when you say theory, perhaps you're thinking about videos, PDF files, or online resources. And yes, exactly what I mean. This is probably the biggest trap when it comes to learning a skill. For me, as a computer science student, I find myself doing a lot of research on Java, Python, HTML and whatnot, but sometimes I end up so much watching the video, I actually don't do the programming and that's bad because there's so much theory in my head. I could do this, I could do that. I can't because I've never done it before. I just know it from my head. So right now we're gonna go to the more important part of theory, which is understanding the fundamentals. And one example of theory and practice is music theory. Music theory helps you understand why you're doing it, why the notes you're gonna play make sense, why the chord progression makes sense. Because in theory, if you do the math, it makes sense. Because when you learn the why of something, you can reverse engineer and learn something from scratch. Another one's gonna be in Photoshop. If I'm looking at a poster I see on Facebook or perhaps Twitter and I say I want to create a poster like that I'm gonna look at what shapes were used what how they color graded how the composition was made and from just reverse engineering I can create something already from scratch and that's how important theory is and this can even be applied to academics whether that be math physics biology if you understand why you can really answer a lot of questions that you couldn't answer because you have a deeper understanding of the subject and the skill know what you need for the project if I'm working on after effects I have to 
to understand masking, I have to understand ease in, ease out. I have to understand velocity of how fast that wipe is gonna go. I have to know these things before I actually jump into it. And lastly, make sure you bite size yung tutunan mo. Because if you take things in big chunks, you're not gonna get anywhere because it's gonna be too hard to digest. Kaya nga, always take it slowly. Don't be pressure don't feel a rush to learn the skill have fun and enjoy three is good for the right things but if you kind of overdo it you're just gonna waste your time and space in your brain because for the most part you're gonna use at least 20 to 50 percent of all the theory the rest is just gonna be i don't know nothing maybe who knows personally that's why i recommend seven hours or less per week when it comes to working on theory so this is where we jump in more into the physical aspect of learning a skill. And to further learn a skill, you need to understand the aspect of a body that will be used. Whether that be my hand muscles, my arm muscles, my lower leg muscles. That's going to be very important. For football, obviously, it's going to be foot and legs. That's going to do most of the heavy lifting. When it comes to basketball, chest, arms, and a bit of leg because you need that speed. When it comes to cooking, you're going to have to understand precision when it comes to cutting onions, cutting any other kind of meat. And once you understand what parts of your body you're using, you're going to be more or less oriented to practice or get better at that specific aspect. So let's actually talk about practicing now. There's a saying where practice makes permanence and it's kind of true because you are going to do what you practice. It's not like anything's going to change. You're going to do exactly what you did when you practiced. And that's why consistency is key. So whether you're going to do academics or not academics, this can apply to every field. And one way to really get better consistency is to practice proactively. And by proactive, I mean is understand every single movement you make and keep repeating that with precision because that's gonna help you get better this is where muscle memory is really gonna kick in it's gonna help you completely it's like even if you forget the notes to playing in a song your hands just kind of already know what to do already because it's in the muscle memory it just feels right when you do it consistency is not only about repeating it but doing it on the exact time of the day or perhaps at least a variation of that time and even if you have little to no time that will inside of you if you really want to learn a skill it's gonna really create time learn to be self-paced and unrushed by the pressure because again learning should be always fun in, in relation to consistency is repetition if you haven't done it a thousand times that's probably why you're not good yet because if you do something a thousand times even if you don't want to do it your muscles gonna understand what you're trying to do and that's kind of how muscle memory slash brain memory works and if you take advantage of how the brain works when it comes to learning you're gonna learn things really fast Use all of this and create and just practice, practice, practice. And in fact, you can go a long way with just practicing. You don't have to know theory or whatnot. Practice is going to make you better, period. All right, the last and final step, which is creativity. This is probably the best part, the most interesting part. This is where you basically use your imagination and I don't know how to put this into steps because this really can't be taught or passed on. Your fingerprint on that skill, your signature. When someone sees you play the guitar, someone sees you play the piano, they're gonna know it's just you because it's, well, it's you, if that makes sense. And one really effective way is creating limitations. When you limit yourself, your brain tries to find a way to work around it and it makes your brain think and become more logical. If you play an instrument blindfolded, you're gonna have to rely more on your hands or feet instead of your eyes because your eyes are basically shut out and that's gonna help you learn because it's gonna challenge you to be very precise with the notes you hit with the parts of the drum that you hit and that's gonna help a lot and in relation to creativity make sure that you build from scratch super important though because when you build from scratch you're not relying on resources you're not relying on people to tell you what to do your only limitation is you your passion for something, your will to do something. But at the same time, if you understand those limits, you can work around them and create something. And that's why learning is so powerful because anyone can learn. All right, that's it for this video. If you learned something new, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below because your feedback will really help me create new content. If you wanna see new stuff like this, if you wanna see other cool projects, let me know in the comments below. So thanks everyone for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. God bless.